All right, so I moved to my picture on this one because it was blocking something important. This is the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is all about basically creating more ATP as much as you possibly can. So what the electron transport chain, if you remember in a mitochondria, you've got the outside of it that looks kind of like a kidney bean and the inside of it that's got this really wavy looking inner membrane. Well, the orange, the light orange part here represents the space between that outer kidney bean shape and the inner membrane shape um, of the mitochondria. And this is an action that is occurring on that actual interior membrane, the wiggly one inside the bean, that is the place that this is happening. And what it's doing is it's creating a gradient. Um, for those of us who haven't covered it before, a gradient is basically a um, is basically in a measure of concentration. And it's trying to create a high gradient between the number of hydrogen ions over here and the number of hydrogen ions over here. So they want to have a lot of hydrogen ions on this side of the membrane and very few over here. Now what that does is that drives these hydrogen ions through natural diffusion to want to cross this membrane and get out here. When there's, remember, uh, in a gradient from high to low, it costs no energy for the, um, for the whatever's being moved along to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So it doesn't cost energy for the hydrogen ion to cross this way because it's going from a high concentration to a low concentration or it's going down the gradient. It's going down the gradient. When you send something up the gradient from the low concentration to the high concentration, that takes energy. And what we see here is the body manipulating this concept in order to create as much ADP as possible. Now, if you will remember, back in glycolysis, we made some NADH. We made some NADH out of NAD+. Back in the Krebs cycle, we made a bunch more NADH and a bunch of FADH2 during the Krebs cycle. And so what happens is this NADH is used, turned back into NAD+, and the energy involved is used in order to drive these hydrogen ions from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. So it's driving them up the gradient to increase the force with which those hydrogen atoms want to get out here. The FADH2 is also spent in order to send these hydrogen ions back out into this space between the inside, um, the internal membrane of the mitochondria and the outside of the bean shape, the mem that membrane of the mitochondria. And then once again over here, we see another reaction in which the hydrogen and the oxygen are reunited, changed from the two hydrogen atoms floating out there. One oxygen, one O2, is split in half. The energy that's involved in uniting these and turning them into water and sending one hydrogen ion back into here, that energy is used to send one hydrogen ion over up the gradient, the wrong direction, spending that energy to increase the difference between the hydrogen ions here and the hydrogen ions out here. So pumping hydrogen ions, pumping them, pumping them, pumping them up into this area so that now finally as the hydrogen ions travel through ATP synthase, they do the work necessary to turn ADP into ATP. So here, doing no work, we have the hydrogen desperately wanting to escape. As it escapes, as it goes from behind the membrane out through the other side of the membrane, going down the gradient, it basically powers this ATP synthase, turning a little quarter turn and producing ATP from ADP plus a phosphate. Now remember, ATP is what is necessary for the cell to do any work. This is how cellular respiration in the electron transport chain produces the massive amount of ATP that oxygen breathing things use.